You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist Kinsman and Mike Benyon Rowe. Don't you do this to me again. I saw TikTok. Okay. Hello. Welcome to Chewing the Cuds. What, what do you mean you saw TikTok? I saw exactly what you put on TikTok. And what was it I put on TikTok? Me having an aneurysm from laughing too you, much. You called me the C word on that TikTok. I, I did, yes. I did. Which we won't put on TV. Um, anyway, what have you actually got for us today, Mike? Uh, well, I have a story about a Scandinavian country that wants something to be significantly longer. And then we have a childhood mystery exposed in that science that is. And we even have a game to play in our game of the week. But on screen now you see our social media contact information. Just look for at the Cud TV. And as the names of people who have reached out go along the bottom of the screen, we go over to Mist and the Showbiz. <laughs> Hello. Uh, right, are you ready for some celebrity showbiz news? What if I said no? Well, then the show's going to be cut short. OK. Go on, then. OK, right. So... Did you realise Justin Bieber mm -hmm. and Jaden Smith are friends? I can see that being a thing. Yeah, well, apparently they've been friends for a good ten years or so, because... They've um, grown up at the same sort of time in the industry, so I can see that. Exactly. Well, apparently um, they collaborate... Collab, collab, if I can say that word. Apparently they collaborated back in 2010 for The Karate Kid, because Bieber was doing the soundtrack and he, right, that was okay. his first film, wasn't it? OK, yeah. Yeah. So they've known each other for a while. Well, Coachella is on. And uh, but hanging out there as people of that age will do, uh, and, and having a good time. But people of other ages go to Coachella. Well, yes, but it's it, I always see it as like a a thing for that age group. Younger children. Younger children. Younger children. They're they're well in their twenties now. No, no, Justin Bieber is not in his thirties at all. Twenties. He's in his twenties. How old is he? He must be in his twenties. He's not. He's not still a teenager. In his thirties. How the. Is he in his 30s? No. 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 Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. So he's in his 30s, yeah. Don't agree with that. that that's not true. It is true. It, it's, in fact, we're, we, if, if Trump can rearrange reality, I can as well. Just so Google's lying to you. He's still a tadpole. It's, it's, it, 90s was the uh, only last week. And uh, none of this is true. Okay. Yeah. So, Jaden Smith, twenty-five. Oh God, you can shut up now. These are children. They're adults. They are... Anyway, mm. anyway, they're friends. Yeah, mm. they are Coachella. friends. Yes, they are friends, and they've gone to Coachella. Okay. Now, you know, when you're a little bit drunk and you're having a little bit of fun, sometimes you might. You know, if you're close with somebody, approach them in a certain way. Fun and friendly. OK. So, Jaden Smith comes up to B Bieber. Mm -hmm. It's all captured on okay. um, Instagram, on Facebook, or, you know, the social things. And people have been chatting about it because it looked a bit fruity. That's just embottoming. <laughs> um, I think, see, I have friends that come up and hug me like that too. Yeah. And it's just a hug. It is just a hug. Well, to be fair, uh -huh. it's followed up by a little peck on the cheek. Oh, really? Yeah. So the whole thing was, yeah, there we go. See, that's a fret. See, his hand isn't on his backside, mm -hmm. so it's not it's not sexual. Well, that's even like, if know, it was, I've got straight friends that cut my bum. It's not while kissing you. Well, yeah, like if it's only like a peck on the cheek. That's in his ear. Only because they know that it makes me uncomfortable when the straight, straight mates do it. Are you saying uncomfortable? <laughs> no, 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 I don't. I, I've, I've got. They're firmly in the friend zone, so I don't oh, okay. like them doing it. But yeah, it's it's nothing, is it? It's, not, it's just yeah. It's just it's it's just got. I mean, that that man in the background's enjoying the view. <laughs> But it's just friends being friends mm, and, and, and a bit of tomfoot. Obviously, Jaden Smith played about with sexuality a lot or in, I, in the social media lo and stuff. Love Jaden well. Smith's just open, honest exploration of the, their own identity. Yeah, okay. it's like, yeah. let them get on with it. But Content. obviously, there's trolls in chat rooms mm -hmm. and they've uh, started using a gay as like a slur. Remember, remember it was when we were kids? and still is now, really. But it's just, 
Well, even if they were. Doesn't matter. Let them get on with it. Like it's they, not... they would make a cute couple. Absolutely. But, yeah. No, and there's lots of things going on friends. with for Justin Bieber at the moment with like accusations and things and stuff like that. But it's just like, for goodness sake. It's like mates be mates. Yeah. It's it's not news. I know we're covering it as news, but it's not news. Just let people be friends. Yeah. So, that's that. Mm -hmm. On to more TV stuff. OK. Uh, because I believe you're a fan of Bridgerton. I do enjoy Bridgerton. So It's a, you know... Bit of, a bit of period drama. A bit of period drama. OK. It's coming back. I know, I'm very excited. <laughs> Season three is going to be coming out. Um, now, I've not really actually watched it very much. That's OK. I don't engage with it. Part of it is because it doesn't really have any appeal f for me because there's no gay love stories on it. Not, OK. There are in my mind. <laughs> well, there's... There's been some accusations about them doing a bit of queer baiting because mm -hmm. I think when the uh, when the trailers came out for the first season, there was some very prominent um, couple couple of people hooking it up, suggesting that there's a gay love story storyline going on. Turns out they were just background actors in a throwaway mm -hmm. scene. Um, so you know, it's okay. Two seasons. It's meant to be about sexual liberation in that period, mm -hmm. and no homos. Well, some of the bits have been a, some of the online storylines. You, you go, is that a bit sapphic? Mm -hmm. On some of them, but it's never actually said this is actually exactly. So, so all the accusations of queer baiting. If you're going to do it, just do just it. Just do it. Yeah. Um, and there's gay actors in there. There's okay. Jonathan Bailey and um, there's Nicola Coughlin, who's uh, played uh, lesbian and Derry girls. Mm -hmm. But no, no. Apparently, that's going to change. Ooh. So if you're looking forward to season three. We're coming. <laughs> Puffs will be on Bridgerton. Well, I, I've heard. Are you it's looking quite... to forward to season three? Because we're coming. We're coming. <laughs> oh, Bridgerton's on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to be in like, like like Spartacus Blood and Sand. That's Never different. made it through an episode. Yeah. Oh, love that show. Yeah. Do you enjoy a good soap wedding? A soapy wedding? A soap wedding, yeah. Weddings on okay. soaps. Oh, right, OK, you know, not like... Yeah. Like when, yeah. Anyway, um, Serialised dramas. I don't really watch that many soaps. Not a fan of not... Emmerdale or EastEnders, Corrie? I've not watched Emmerdale since it was Emmerdale Farm and Amos was in it. Mm -hmm. OK? Um, and for those of you that were born after the year 1989, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, my grandparents used to be in the soaps, so I used to watch them a lot, but I'm not, I've never really been into it. Mm -hmm. I like the occasional EastEnders meme thing. Like, get out of my pub! <laughs> that I like, but I'm not watching a whole episode. Well, f when soaps go big, mm -hmm. like at Christmas or um, for some big celebrations, they, they really go big. OK. And typically, some soaps, that's when a wedding occurs. OK. And there'll be a natural disaster or an ex-wife turns up Airplane. and they're still married. You know, all that kind of stuff. Airplane crashing into a village that's nowhere near an airport or an airfield. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Archie! Oh, Archie! I remember that. That's, 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 that lives rent-free in my brain forever. Yeah. Um, anyway. Sometimes they can be used for a force for good. OK. This time we've, we're getting a wedding in Emmerdale. Mm -hmm. And... It's going to be landmark TV. OK. Because the person getting married is one of our own. It's a trans actor. Cool. Yes. Um, so the actor's called Ash Palmisco. Or let me say if I can get that pronounced by Palmisiano. Ash Palmisiano. I think that's how it's pronounced. OK, cool. Handsome chap. And they play a character called Matty Barton. Um, now... You remember like Kylie and Jason? That's like a, that was like a big Especially wedding. Especially for you. Exactly. Yeah. But this one's going to be land a landmark moment mm -hmm. because both they and the character they play is trans, okay, and actually cool. they it's. Because there's very little representation of trans, or especially positive representation. Mm -hmm. This is a big moment. I, I think it's a, a, an ama amazing moment for Emma Dell to actually do a trans wedding. Mm -hmm. Is that the first one in British um, soap history? Yes, exactly. That's why it's Landmark TV. Okay, cool. And 
they've put everything in, in into it. Like I've, I've read interviews and they've really dedicated. They're looking forward to it. They've, they've put in the best performance. They are a Shakespearean level actor. Mm -hmm. They um, they they performed. They've been the first trans actor to work at the Royal Shakespeare. Well, as far as we know in its history, uh, the Royal Shakespeare first company. Out trans actor. Exactly. Uh -huh. um, the Royal Shakespeare so, Company was always a little bit gender fluid. Yeah, I would have thought yeah, so. And it was that only had men playing women parts for a long, long time. So, yeah. But well done, Emmerdale, for for just showing human beings in a human being way. And it's a large mainstream audience, yep. so I think it's very, very important that they're on there. Perfect. Well done. Well done, mm. then. And that's all from the showbiz. Thanks for that, Mist. Always nice to end on a positive note for our trans siblings. You're welcome. But stick around now as it's Mike in the Buzz. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist and Mike. Now let's go deep into the horrible World Wide Web and see what Mike has found in the buzz. Mostly lovely things, to be fair. Really? Yeah. It's not a horrible place. You don't go to the, d the dark web. I go to the dimly lit web. Oh, OK. Which is where it gets a little bit fruitier. Mm. But without the you know stabby stabby, oh no, we don't we don't like the stabby stabby. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, well, the first one is about um, what has been nicknamed the fantasy house, right, or Ron's place in Birkenhead. Have you heard of this place? I've I've not heard about Ron's place. Okay. No. Um, I when I when I first got told about this this place, mm. right, I went, are you sure this isn't Mist's house? <laughs> um, <laughs> because it's it's literally a, a gentleman called um, Ron Gettins, mm -hmm. right, who was in Birkenhead, who died in 2019, right? And when the council went in to take back possession of his flat, went, oh, my goodness, what has he done to this flat? What had he done? Right. Was he, there a sex dungeon in the cellar? Is that why you thought it was mine? No, um, because it was a flat. They don't have, they don't have cellars in flats. <laughs> um, it's actually... A, he's made the whole house a fantasy land, OK? So things like he has got a fire that's got a, a, a bull's head and the fire's in the mouth, yeah? Um, and it's, it's to the point where the National Trust, I always have to really pronounce the T on it because National Trust is a different thing. Um, National Trust have turned around and said, this needs to be grade two listed, right? And so given it listed status, mm -hmm. okay? Um, I've got a couple more pictures of it. Okay, so that's the bathroom, mm -hmm. yeah? Now it had fallen into a bit of disrepair, but you know, it, yeah, he's not had a bath in there for a while. The toilet looks pristine, though. Yeah, so this is um, because he was having work done and stuff mm -hmm. when he died. Um, so it's things like he's done a, a, a seascape in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we also have a picture of his um, his dining room. Wow. It's the lion's head with the fire in it. Yeah. And all this is hand painted, right? The, um, the sculptures and stuff that he's made, uh, the actual art itself, he is all done by hand. I, I really envy plastic. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he also did a couple of his rooms as well. And he, the murals were, were carried on in different parts of the room, even to the ceiling. Wow. So he painted it all by hand. So it, it's, a, it's a really good, you know, it's been given grade two listed status. I'm not surprised. Right? It's absolutely amazing. Because he'd, he'd spent his entire life working on it. Yeah, so he'd been living in the house for like, flat for 30 years. Mm -hmm. Spent an entire thirty years making it like this, um, and his friends and family said it. You know, it changed over the years as well, so he'd updated it. And so mm -hmm. there's other things below it, um, but they've given it listed two status, so it's there forever and been preserved for all time. I absolutely. So my f first proper career job was mm -hmm. doing street theatre, and I moved into this house uh, called One O One. It was nowhere near on this scale at mm -hmm. all but lots of murals, lots of paper. The landlady, Sue, who's still a very dear friend, her her current house has just got beautiful paintings all over. There's just, like, vines going up the staircases. It's all hand Nowhere near on this scale. Mm -hmm. um, but the, that house got closed down and they all left it and it's sort of been turned into student flats. Oh, so I'm really glad that this person's yeah. had their legacy preserved because that's I, I, it's just stunning to me. Mm -hmm. I just I love it. Because who needs more magnolia walls? Me. 
uh, to be honest, I would I would probably stay there if it was a B and B for a night. <laughs> right. <laughs> Why I could not live there. Oh, I love it. Well, moving on. Mm -hmm. Um, you have a bath in your bedroom. I do have a bath in my bedroom. Because you yes. believe it's the nineteen seventies. Um do you have a rubber duck in your bath? I don't have a rubber duck, no, because I'm not a child. Okay. Hey. <laughs> regret saying that now. Um, so this is a story about uh, uh, the little rubber ducky that could. Okay. Okay. So this rubber ducky was released as part of a world record, record attempt that released 150,000 rubber ducks into the sea. Okay. So not great for the environment. Turtles are going, oh, man, give us a chance. Right. This rubber duck managed to get from um, Dublin to Scotland. Right. Over the course of 18 years. Yeah. Little rubber duck that went, basically, was released as part of this big um, record attempt and travelled over 400 miles around the north of the UK. Well, how do we know that's the route? It, if it took 18 years, it could have dipped over to America and come back. It's gone on a world tour. Yeah. Yeah, it's gone to America, it's gone down the Grand Canal. Yeah. Yeah, it's gone down the River Nile. Well, you never know, in 18 years, unless it had GPS so you could track it, did it? No, it didn't have no. So you only know where it set off and where it ended up. Uh-huh. You don't know how it got there. You're just presuming it bobbed up. I would have thought it got well, there quicker I than didn't write the years. map. I didn't draw the map. So I'm saying I did that. It, it, it travelled for at least I mean, the royal miles. you. Yeah. <laughs> the royal me? <laughs> Off with his head! Mm, head. Um, right. You old queen. Who are you calling old? <laughs> right. So, 2005, it went round, and it was found by a 13-year-old boy and his dog who were out walking on the beach. Wow. Which I thought was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just a little rubber ducky that could. Make me smile. It's like it. Well, we do have the uh, duck race in Manchester, don't we? We do, but we don't release them into the sea where they can kill turtles. Well, where did they end? Do they, get, do they manage to ca capture them yeah. all before they go out? To the, they are released into an actual river that does go to the sea. Yeah, yeah, but they're, they're caught at the end. They're, they're, ah. they, they fence it off because you don't want lots of plastic ducks ending in the sea because no. that's littering. No. Yeah. But 2005, different time. Wow. Yeah. And if you like to release things into the sea that, you know, really you shouldn't, why not share that with us? We are at the Could TV on social media. And that brings us nicely to our story of the week. You're an honorary northerner, aren't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Adopted. Th thoroughly adopted. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard the phrase, have, the, have you got your time on your cock? Mm-hmm. What does that mean to you? That means to me a very old and funny Jasper Harris sketch. OK. <laughs> okay. To me, what the time? what's the time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, this is the Norwegians who've decided that they want more time on their clock. Um, because they, they've petitioned the, the rest of the world mm -hmm. to allow them to have a new time zone, okay. which has 13 hours on the clock. It's a 26-hour day. Why? Okay. Pretty much all of those hours are dark anyway. And that's the thing. What they've said is it will encourage people to have more of a family-focused time. OK. OK. Um, the hours would be a little bit shorter. Mm -hmm. OK, so they're not going to go wildly out of sync. Um, but they turned around and said that, look, we think that if we had a short, a 26-hour day, it would encourage people to spend time with their family and go out when it's light. So it's not yeah. that they're trying to put more time in the day, it's just how they're chopping that time up. Exactly. OK. OK, um, when asked about what impacts they think that could have on travel and that sort of thing, they've gone. Mm. I said, OK, so how else do you think you could implement it? And I went, mm. It's just an idea we've had. Because it's not the entirety of Norway, it's one particular region of Norway that want this. OK. It's the northern um, area of Norway that want it, so the, the ones that's close to the North Pole, the ones that get the longest summer and the dark, mm -hmm. shortest winters. And it's that, we, want, we, we just want it. Happens to have been brought out by a mayor who may or may not be up for re-election. <laughs> right? And it's like, wait... Do you just... I can't really see that being a vote winner, really. Apparently it's, doing, it's very popular. Wow. As an idea. But when people are being asked, so what does that mean? He's gone, I don't know. So there's not much hope of it getting through. See, I lived in Finland for a little bit, so I've, I've experienced the... 23 hours worth of darkness and an hour's worth of sun. And then flip side it. Yeah. Because yeah, some of them don't get dark. No. 
And it was just... Do you know, it really settled me out. I loved it. It settled me out? Yeah. I didn't, like, I was going to sleep at the right time, having a full night's sleep, waking up at the right time. So, like, it, it, instead of, like, you know, as you go from light to dark and it just uh-huh. screwing up your body clock and go, making you weird. Body clock. Oh, it does, it does mine. No, always awake at five in the morning. Well, I'm always awake at five o'clock in the morning, but that's because a cat keeps nibbling at my toes. OK. Yeah. Aggressive pussy waking you up. And aggressive pussy wanting feeding in the morning, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I wake up at five in the morning and get up and do do things, do stuff. I have to do like a nap afterwards. Um, but yeah, what I thought it was interesting about this entire thing is the fact that it is not thought about any more than going, why do, why do we not just ask? And so they have put in the formal petition to create this new time zone. To who? Who's it? Greenwich? It's not Greenwich, it's just the time zone for Greenwich. It, yes, right. but Greenwich and... It's the, it's the UN and all that sort of thing that they have to agree with. I don't think the UN are in charge... Greenwich is in charge of time. No, it's not. There's, there's no UN Department of Time. There's a Greenwich Department of Time. And, um, yeah. <laughs> there's a Greenwich Department of Time. <laughs> they invented time! They didn't invent time in Greenwich. Time has always been a thing. It was standardised in Greenwich. Yes. Right, and they, they had a conversation with a couple of other nations, all conveniently in Europe, um, and went, we should have a time zone that's set here, because there's a, a meridian in Paris as well, because mm-hmm. they wanted a, a time zone that was in Paris. And was yeah, but that's, that's where it was collaborated and determined, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. In Greenwich. Yeah, and, and agreed that it was going to be, there was going to be the lag. I've never heard of anything like that being agreed in the UN. Or that they're well, having a specific function about, about that. No, but they've got to ask someone about... You can't just create a time zone. No, you can't. So you go and talk to Greenwich. <laughs> like talking to a child, but that's all from the buzz this week. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. I love it when I break your brain. Uh, stick around as we have coming up our game to play in Game of the Week. Welcome back, and yes, you're fortunate enough to be watching Chewing the Cud. So, now we're going to play a game called Mighty Interesting. And this one is for the man who once accidentally ate all the snacks that were supposed to be for the studio. You ate all the snacks! I was hungry. And I don't care. Game of the Week. I have some factoids. Factoids. Okay. Well, well, I have some factoids okay. um, that I'm going to pose to you as questions. Ooh. Okay. Um, so, in the US, mm-hmm. yeah, approximately how many people identify as being gay and or lesbian? Ooh. Can you, how, how many people are in those countries? In the US, that's yeah. one country. Well, yeah, how many people are in that one country? More than one, less than a trillion. Hmm. I'm going to say... I will accept a percentage. I, I could give a percentage. OK. I, I, would, I would say that it is... 7%. 7%. OK. Actually, 8.8. Ooh! I wasn't far off. That's mighty interesting. It is, yeah. Um... That is just the people that they, they identify as gay or lesbian, it doesn't include anyone bisexual and that sort of thing, mm. um, which I think is a bit of a shame, but it's, it's still interesting. Plus, um, not all the closet cases, so it's probably a lot, lot more. Mm-hmm. Right, so people, I did pose the question of people that identify as, mm-hmm. not the people that don't keep it quiet. Um, so, in the US, we're going to stay in the US, we'll stay over the pond, right? Approximately how many children do you think are being raised by same-sex couples right now? How many children? Mm-hmm. I don't think it's probably that much because they're still quite conservative in America and if they're still wibbling about abortion laws, they're probably going to be even more wibbly about same-sex couples. Um, so let's say a million. It's a million? Oh! Well done, you. It's actually, they expect approximately a million children to be uh, raised by same-sex couples. Wow! That is actually mighty interesting! How many 
Americans, do you believe, identify as a side in the gentleman population of gays? As a what? As a side. A side? Do you know what a side is? No, I actually don't know what okay. a side is. So or unless you mean side piece. No, a side, a side is a someone that doesn't isn't top or bottom mm -hmm. because they don't engage in penetrative sex. No idea. I, I, I can't conceive of the idea. Okay. About one in three. Really? In the US, about one in three identify as a side or do not engage in anal sex or penetrative sex. In which country do we believe that there is a growing homosexual population that is accepted? Well, all your questions so far have been about America, so I'm going to say America. No. Oh. No. Um, it's actually China. And people have, have put this down to the, their one-child policy. To the what policy? Their one-child policy. Oh. Yeah. So only allowed one ch children. So the, basically, you still need to enjoy yourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're saying, well, this way they can still have fun. And so there's a growing acceptance of homosexuality. Well, that is mighty interesting. My, um, uh, I, I don't know if this is an, apoc an apocryphal story or not, but um, it was when a friend of mine came out to uh, their parents, their grand, um, their parent was going, oh, no, oh, no, no, the grandparent was there, and she turned around to, uh, to the mother and said, I don't know why you're complaining about your son having anal sex. How do you think that you're an only child? That's mighty interesting. <laughs> hmm. um, Anal sex, the original contraception. So a swallowing. Mm, this is true. Which was the first US novel to touch on the subject of homosexuality? Which was the first US novel to touch on the subject of homosexuality? That's touching on the subject, not touching an. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> Little Women? Is that written in America? Yeah, it's okay. a great American novel, Little Women, I think. Okay. Uh, it was actually Bayard Taylor's 1870 Ooh. Ooh. story, Joseph and His Friend. Oh, that is mighty interesting. When you said touching on, I thought like it was maybe a throwaway line and something suggesting in The Great Gatsby or something, but yeah. that sounds like it's actually fully about homosexuality. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a very, very gay book. Ooh. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, The Drag. The Drag. Okay. Is the first play with gay male contact to be produced in the United States. Okay. Who was it written and produced by? Oh, Truman Capote? No. Ah. Oh, no. I would have thought Truman, like, that's a... Truman, Truman was very, very gay. Mm-hmm. He didn't necessarily write about gay things. Okay. He was, he was very much a, like, telling stories about other people and other parts yeah. of life. He, he tried to deflect. Um, it was Mae West. May West. May West. As in, oh, come up and see me sometime. Yeah. yeah. May wow. Wow. I, I, I knew I liked that woman. That's mighty interesting. Okay. The first gay bookstore in the world mm -hmm. um, was found in 1967 in New York City. Oh. Uh -huh. What was its name? Oh, I, th I think I know this one, or at least I've heard of it, but it's, it's escaping me. Or I might be confusing it for the one that I know of in um, L.A. So, no, the name's gone. I can't remember. You're not even going to have a guess? I, it, I, I know... No, I can't... I, I can't... I can't remember. There's only one thing in the world worse than being a bookshop, and that is not being a bookshop. That should give you a hint. I I can't remember. Okay, um, it's the Oscar Wilde Memorial Bookshop. Oh, that's not what I was thinking of at what all. What were you thinking of? Uh, it it was something like the something something store. You know, a very 
matter of fact description um like the 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 magazine shop or something like that it was I'd like i can't remember I, yeah i couldn't that's not what i was thinking of okay but it is mighty interesting that it is okay um who was the first openly gay best actor nominee in the history of the academy awards Mm. I'll give you a clue, he was a Brit. A Brit? Mm -hmm. I was thinking Marlon Brando, because he was quite, you know... He, 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 he didn't hide it, did he? He was not the first openly gay. He wasn't very good at hiding it, but he wasn't openly gay. He wasn't going, my name is, yeah. and I mm. am gay. I think he was probably more... He, and if you were going to say that about him, he was probably more openly bisexual. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, a Brit. Errol Flynn? Nigel Hawthorne. What? Uh, so he's the, the star of the film The Madness of King George from 1995. I, 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 I didn't know he was one of ours. Did you not? No, I didn't. Okay. Or am I confusing him for Nigel Havers? You might be confusing him. <laughs> anyway, that's mighty interesting. It is. Okay. Um... The, the name of our, our community, LGBTQIA+. Okay. Mm-hmm. What was its first incarnation? I just prefer to use the word queer, to be honest. I know some people don't like it, but I, I, I find it much more empowering. Um, but I didn't know there was anything other than LGBT. Okay. So it's first called GLBT. Oh. Um, however, LGBT came much more popular in the late 80s and early 90s because of the lesbian support of the gay men who were suffering with um, in the AIDS pandemic. Mm. Um, so it became a lot more of a way of honouring our, our lesbian uh, sisters who were supporting the gay community and putting them first in LGBT. Oh, OK, that's quite cute and mighty interesting. Yeah. But that's all I have for you today. Stick around as next it's Mike in that science that is. Welcome back to Cheering the Cud. And now we learn something we didn't need to know. It's Mike in that science that is. That science, that is. Now, Miss, when you were a child all those many, 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 many years ago... Oh, you're rude, you are. Because it's true. Right, um, what was your favourite pudding after after food? Ooh. Mmm, I, I do like pud. Um, uh-huh. But, oh, like, I couldn't pick a favourite. Angel Delight, you say? Oh, well, that's good. Because um, the way that... <laughs> the way that Angel's Light works... I thought you were going to go for sticky toffee. Or, or, or rice. Tapioca... No, tapioca. Tapioca was the worst. Tapioca's horrible. But Angel Delight... I can, I, I, you, can, you can tell me Angel Delight. OK, cool. Um, chocolate Angel Delight was your favourite. That's good. Um, so... The... Strawberry. I like strawberry. No, no. Chocolate... Cho chocolate, yeah, I loved chocolate strawberry de uh, no. angel delight. Chocolate yeah. strawberry. Still got me saying chocolate strawberry angel delight. Now. Chocolate <laughs> angel delight was your favourite, okay? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Read the auto cue, man. Right. Um, <laughs> so, the way that um, angel delight always worked, always fascinated me as a child because it was something you just added milk to. Yeah. Waited and it became firm. Mm. Well. Right. And and it's just a shame that that doesn't happen in real life. <laughs> Add milk and... Oh, no, it does. Anyway, um, so it happened because of a, a chemical reaction. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make Angel Delight. We're going to make Angel Delight? We're going to make Angel Delight, so a self-thickening liquid. <laughs> hey. there's, 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 there's a joke in there somewhere, there but I'm not going to go for it. If you take I, a lot of I, zinc, I, that also works. Say that again. If you take a lot of zinc, you don't know about zinc. Zinc? Yeah, you take zinc protein, you come get thicker. 
Now um, that is mighty. Did you not know uh, that that bit's finished? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to take down. Yeah, you just have to note. be careful you don't take too much zinc because it has all the other impacts. But yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make angel delight. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we're going to make it so we can eat it too. Ooh. Okay. So science and a snack. Science and a snack because everybody loves puppets. That's the wrong phrase. <laughs> anyway, um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add our flavour. Okay. Okay. Now the flavour is chocolate, as I've said repeatedly, mm -hmm. um, and that's this stuff here. Okay. What this is is this is ground up dairy milk, freeze dried Ooh. ground up dairy milk. Other chocolate bars are available. Um, so what I want you to do is just just pop like a teaspoonful of that into your bowl. Okay. Okay. Oh, I like mixing powders. Yeah, you know, it involves a rolled up 20. Um, the next thing we're going to add, mm -hmm. it's not saying it's not true, um, is one of the thickening agents, diphosphate. Diphosphate? Diphosphate. That sounds which like is the name Welsh of the drag suite. Which is Welsh phosphate. Welsh phosphate. Welsh phosphate. <laughs> Okay, and that's the one to the right of your your, your chocolatey chocolatey. Oh, right? okay. Okay, and you want literally a small amount, so you just want like a pinch, a pinch, a tip, just the tip, really, of a teaspoon. Ooh. With okay. that bit on it. Watch. Okay. The um, sprinkling. Yeah. Um, so it's actually sodium phosphates and diphosphates, and they're already mixed together. Okay. Okay. The next thing we need is an emulsifier. Mm. Okay, um, which is um, propane glycerol and esters of fatty acids. Fatty acids? Fatty acids. Okay. I'm on a diet. It's essence of fatty acids. Oh, okay. Right, um, and it's half a teaspoon of that you want. Half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon of that. Oh, it's very technical, all of it. It is. Very okay. Um, now, they, if you're having the strawberry one, the strawberry flavouring would be um, just strawberry flavour so it wouldn't have a colour so you'd have to add beetroot as well. Oh, okay. Um, because beetroot is a great flavour for strawberry. Um, but because we're doing chocolate we don't need to do that but we do need to add an anti-caking agent. Oh. Okay. And that's because nobody likes cake apparently. No, what this does is it stops it becoming um, solidified in the packet. So oh. It's on the shelf and it, if it gets a bit humid or hot or cold and stuff it doesn't just become a mush. So when you mix in the milk, are you just whipping this stuff out? No, 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 because the, the anti-caking agent only works over a certain pH. Okay. Okay. So what actually happens is when we make when you make instant whip, it is slightly acidic. Mm -hmm. Okay. You add the um, milk and it takes down the pH. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so the anti-caking agent stops working. Oh. Yes, it's clever. Oh. Oh, that is clever. Okay, but because we're doing it manually, it might mean it fizzes a little bit when we put it together. Okay. Okay. Just but if you only need the anti-caking thing to stop it get caking when it's in the packet, uh -huh. and we're just getting on with it and making it straight away, we're not packaging up and selling it to a shop. Mm -hmm. Do we need it? Well, I'm I'm following what's in it. Okay. So I didn't want to not put it in in case it stopped anything happening. Okay. So uh, again, about, about the same sort of thing that we used for the first one. So about. Just the tip. Just the tip. Just the tip. Okay, anti-caking agent. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's silicon dioxide. There's lots of dioxides in this. There are. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing we need is um, milk powder and calcium carbonate, which okay. is your last one. Is this okay. just grated cheese, then? Huh? Grated cheese, then. Grated cheese? Yeah. Calcium carbonate? Yeah. That's, you get calcium from cheese, don't you? Yeah, calcium carbonate is things that are in antacids and stuff. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, cool. You can see why I don't do the science. Or the... anything, really. Right, um, mix those powders together a little bit, okay. so you've got a good mix. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then, if you have a look at it, does that look like instant, you know, angel delight to you? Um, it... Does actually, yeah. yeah. Well, that's a good sign. Okay. Now we're going to add our milk. Hang on, can I go and get my bank card? Go. On. So we're just going to add our milk now. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Now remember, as I said, when you first How add much? it, we just we're going to use all of it, but you, you add a little bit at a time. Okay. Okay. 
I, I love the fact you always get me to play around with fluids above all the electrics. Yes, yes, I do. You are trying to kill me, basically, aren't you? Yes, and failing. <laughs> um, so then just keep you can make it look it. like a suicide if you get me to do all the science bit myself. All right, that's all. Sp- it is fizzing a little bit. A little bit, but that's because we're doing it. So the, the exact weights and things are slightly different. Um, because I didn't have a, a set of scales that you could do quarters of grams on. <laughs> so I don't own that sort of thing. You should have asked me. <laughs> I know you do. Um, um, so now that's all mixed, do I need to add a little bit more? No, no, no. Once, oh, yeah. So once you've got it into a paste, add the rest of your milk because you want all the milk in there. All the milk in. Yeah. Is that not just going to make it really runny? Well, it always starts off runny. Mm, so correct quantity. So with mine, it's actually starting to thicken up now. You can actually feel it getting a little bit thicker. Oh, some of it's gone white and some of it's got brown. Yeah, yeah it's this because it's the emulsifier. It takes a little while. Okay. Okay. Um, and then just pop it back into your glass. Oh, God, you are really trying to kill me. Why? You just pour it. I'm going to pour it over that so I don't die. And you didn't die. You didn't spill any. That's because I'm talented. That's exactly it. So what we do now is we just leave that. Okay. okay. It needs to go into the fridge for about five, ten minutes. Mm-hmm. Okay, for the reaction to work. Okay. And what will happen is all those chemicals are going to basically just expand. And as the, the actual chemical formulas expand and they take on more liquid, it, that's what makes it get thicker. Ooh. That is creating a lovely little dessert for us because that's science that is. That's science, that is. So we've just got to wait for those to set now. How long do we have to wait? I'm Five hungry. to ten minutes. You're, you're hungry? Yeah. OK. Um, you ta- started talking about dessert, and I like dessert. OK. Um, I deserve dessert. OK. Show we, 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 Where's my remote? Let's just speed up time a little bit. OK, so that should have been enough time. OK, So good. what people don't realise on the set is these little cupboards behind us mm-hmm. are little mini fridges. Ooh! So if you have a look in your little fridge, you should have... Your age of delight should have... Ah, oh, awesome! OK, and there's a little spoon for you there too. Ooh, so yeah, thank you! It's fully set. Mm-hmm. OK, so that... Oh! Oh, that is well done. Mm. Delicious, man. Ooh, mm. you've done a good job there. Yeah. Good well, the powder we were fiddling about with earlier. Mm. Science is amazing stuff, you know. Uh, it's tasty. Mm. Anyway, that's almost the end of the show for now. Remember to join us on our social media. At the Good TV on all the usual places. I'm not going to stop eating this. Mm-hmm. 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 Bye. Mm. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the exact same stuff. But <laughs> well, it? It is actually quite good. <laughs> <laughs>